Really quickly before we start this video, I am extremely excited to announce that this entire Japan food and travel video series is available for sale and it includes a few extra videos as well as a question and answers video. If you are interested, I will leave the link in the description box below and also at the very end of this video, I will explain a few more details. That's it. Day 14 of Delicious Food in Japan starts now. Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens with Migrationology.com in Osaka, Japan. The day has come and it is time for us to move on so we are, we are all packed up and we are checking out of this apartment. I don't know if I can live without that heated toilet seat anymore. That was fantastic. Uh, but anyway, we are checking out but we are not leaving. Our flight is not until tonight so we have the full day to do some more eating. We're gonna go drop off our bags at the train station and then we're gonna do some more eating. Excellent, we found a locker. Our bags are stowed. That is an extremely convenient feature in Japan. We are walking back to the Kuromon Market uh, because there's one street food stall serving a dish called Oden that I wanna try. That bubbling pan of random items and ingredients is exactly what I'm after. There are all sorts of things boiling in this Oden pot. Just look at that bubbling swirl. Oh, my lens is all foggy now. Chikua. Okay. <laughs> I got my tray of oden, and oden is very well known as a winter dish or winter thing to eat in Japan. Uh, so people start to eat it when it starts getting cooler and it's a soothing, comforting dish. Another really interesting thing that I've researched about oden is that it is common as a street food like what I'm eating right now. But there are also Michelin starred restaurants that serve oden. So it really has a, a range of different levels um, of different oden that you can try in Japan. But of course I am eating the street food version and I couldn't be happier. And it is boiled in a broth which is a dashi stock made from bonito flakes, dried fish flakes, I believe. Um, and so then it just boils away. And yeah, I gotta start with the daikon radish because that is what you have to eat when you have oden. And you can see that broth down there. Mm. Oh, that's hot and extremely juicy. Mm. Oh, that just falls apart in my mouth. You can taste that daikon radish, but also you can taste the stock, which is a little bit, a little bit salty, a little bit sweet, or maybe the sweetness is coming from that daikon radish. And then also you can taste a little, just a hint of a dry, fishy flavor to it. Oh, 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 oh. oh I, I think that's beef. It is just full of the juices of that broth. Mmm, that's awesome. It almost looks, it's very tubular, and then it has like a, a brown skin around it. Mm. I think that's fish cake. I just finished with that plate of oden. That was good. It's plain, but yeah, really, I guess there's no other way to put it than it's very comforting and very soothing, and I can see how that would be a very attractive thing to eat in colder weather. We are now walking to a curry restaurant close to Namba Station. This is the curry restaurant, and they are open. And the menu is outside. Those photos look incredible. I think I'm going for that one right there at the top. Japanese curry is extremely popular, and it is often a 24 hours a day meal. People eat it at all times of the day, uh, but it really is a fusion dish blending the curry powder flavor with Japanese ingredients and the Japanese rice. I saw this on the picture menu and I had to order it. This is one of their specialties. Um, so there's Japanese rice on the bottom and then she actually fried a katsu, tonkatsu pork cutlet. She deep fried it freshly before assembling my plate. So it is fresh pork cutlet at the bottom and then she put on that thick scoop of the Japanese curry sauce and then a, there's a soft boiled egg on that very top and she literally put on an entire cupful of chopped green onions. Oh, I just can't get over eggs. They are the most beautiful things maybe in the world. 
Okay, I'm going in with that yolk and for a piece of the katsu and green onions. Oh, or maybe two pieces of katsu. No, I better not. I better just go in for one. Oh, do I even have any rice? I don't, I don't know. What really makes it good is that she fried that, that katsu cutlet fresh, so it's extremely crispy. It is Japanese curry, so it's mild, but it has a really pleasant curry powder, like fragrance to it. Plus, it's really thick and and very creamy, kind of like a kind of like a brown gravy. And then those that freshness of the green onions. This is this is an awesome plate of Japanese curry. One of the best condiments for a plate of Japanese curry is, I believe they are pickled, maybe pickled daikon, or some kind of red pickled something. Just check out the layers and the sauces of this bite. Now that is pure comfort. That was a really good plate of food. Maybe one of the best versions of Japanese curry that I've ever had. This restaurant is just, just basically across the street from Namba Station, so really close here, easy to get to. And if you're looking for good Japanese curry, good place. We are off to a wonderful start to our last day in Osaka. I'm Daniel, I'm from Malaysia, and I'm currently working in Japan. And uh, please subscribe to Mark's channel. Thank, thank you, you very, very much, much Daniel. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, good luck. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Bye bye. We just jumped onto the subway and we are en route to the Osaka Open Air Museum of Old Japanese Farmhouses. And I think that uh, name of the museum sums up everything that it is. We just arrived to Rio Kuchi Koen Station and here's the map we got out of the station and the museum should be somewhere in this big park. I am taking a guess that that is a sign for the museum of farmhouses. Quite a nice park though. It's huge and there are families having picnics, relaxing, exercising. We walked through the park and that took about 15 minutes from the station. The park is really busy today, lots of families are out enjoying the weather and barbecuing and just enjoying themselves and we made it to the museum now. There is a 500 yen entrance fee and we're going in. This open air museum, which is just kind of part of the park, contains 12 different farmhouses from the country all around Japan. And one of the coolest things about this museum is that the all of the houses, they weren't actually built on location but instead all of the houses are from where they are originally from throughout Japan and they were taken apart piece by piece brought here to this park museum and then reconstructed here so they are all authentic houses from the country all over Japan and that's what makes this museum so cool oh wow this one is really cool it's fully thatched even the walls and the roof This is a little miniature door. It's so cool and nice in here and it really is a big open space communal communal style. I'm walking through the museum and you see there's a fruit tree right ahead of me and here's something funny. There's a sign and one of the fruits just fell right onto the sign and it got sliced right in half by the sign. The roof of this farmhouse is so awesome. It's such a thick thatch, and then on the top, there are just heaps of weeds and different kind of grass growing out of it. And then if you look really closely, you can see there's moss and other things growing within the thatch of the roof. This is one of the most impressive farmhouses at the open air museum because of the really steep roof. Just that thing is amazing that it's built just of thatch and you have to take off your shoes to enter, but you can come inside and oh, and they even have a fire going on in here. That was really one of the most enjoyable museums that I have been to in a long time. I really liked how it's hands-on so you can walk around those different farmhouses and also walk into the farmhouses. And I love how authentic it is. They're real 
real farmhouses transported from the countryside into this museum. That is well worth a visit when you are in Osaka. We arrived back to Namba and we're just walking around and I just saw this. This is a famous snack I read about as well. A tori kara stick. We got our order and they definitely look very similar to chicken nuggets. And then they have an entire sauce station with about 10 different kind of sauces you can add. Barbecue sauce, hot pepper sauce, mayonnaise, vinegar, all sorts of stuff. Okay. A little nugget and that's the original spice on it. Mm. Yeah. I think those are chicken nuggets. And then the seasoning is just kind of like a spiced salt. We have decided to step into this restaurant to have a bowl of udon noodles. And I think this is an udon chain restaurant. I've seen a number of them around town. Oh, that udon steam. So I got my noodles and then I think this is just self-service tempura. Oh, that looks like eggplant. We came into this udon restaurant and this is really kind of a fast and furious restaurant, kind of fast food style. Uh, you just get your noodles, your udon noodles, and then you get a tray and you just uh, roll your tray through the line and then it's all self-service from there. You can choose whatever pieces of tempura that you want and you just put them on a side plate and then you get charged according to how much you take. I got the dipping udon noodles, so the noodles, but they're still in water, but then they come with a, a dipping sauce. I'm just gonna submerge them all into that sauce. Ho, ho, ho. And in this sauce, I added some uh, ginger and some green onions as well. Oh, that might be too much. Those noodles are very thick, um, as udon is, and they are a little bit chewy, and yeah, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty decent fast food udon. And I got some fried tempura on the side. I think this one is fish. I think this deserves a dip in the sauce as well. That was a bowl of Japanese fast food style udon. It was pretty good. And now we are, whoa, there's a lot of people here tonight. And we are walking around. I don't know what we're gonna do next. For our last food experience in Osaka, I wanted to come to an izakaya and eat some sashimi and some yakitori. So we found the perfect place. We just got our food fresh and it just is exceeding my expectations. It's absolutely beautiful. And the chef just uh, surprised us. But there's three different kinds. Uh, this one I always like with the leek. And then this one, he topped it with some kind of like a, like a a sauce and then some kind of a green herb. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. Oh, that's like a tangy, ketchupy sauce on top. And then that herb has a very, like, earthy taste to it. Mm. Mm. That is shiso leaf. This one is always one of my favorites. I think it's chicken thigh and then that leek. Oh, the leek is so good. I ordered a plate of sashimi and I actually had no idea what I was gonna get. But this emerged from the chef. He has done a, just a stunning job at presentation. It's filled with ice at the bottom and there are a bunch of different fish um, sliced up. There are little like salads all over the place. There are sticks and like fresh branches in here for decoration. And there's a little iceberg over here. This is just one of the most beautiful presented things I've ever seen. <laughs> so pure. I didn't even add any soy sauce or anything to that. I really have no idea what this is right here, but it's like a little green coil. Oh, that actually has zero flavor. But, oh, actually it's a little bit bitter. 
as long as something is not hiding be behind a leaf or a branch, I think I'm down to my last bite. And let me just put some of this wasabi. This wasabi is actually really sweet. It's not really, it's not really that spicy. My last piece of fish and with a shiso leaf. So fresh, so good. That shiso leaf has such a beautiful earthy, green, peppery flavor to it. And that, that wasabi is kind of sweet. I think this might be my last bite of food in Osaka. Just finished with that izakaya, and I'm really glad we had that experience as our final little meal in Osaka. And we actually stopped at a couple of izakaya restaurants in this area. Uh, but they were all full and they said the out wait was a couple of hours because people go to really hang out. Uh, luckily we stopped in there and they had three open seats. So that was fantastic. We are now I think gonna head back to the Namba train station and gonna catch our train to go to the airport. I think this station is called Nankai Namba. Uh, but we made it to the station at Namba and we're gonna buy our tickets to the airport and not forgetting our baggage in the locker. We got our bags and now going to our train track. We took the local train all the way from Osaka to Kansai Airport. It took a little longer than I expected at about an hour and a half, but that's okay because we're not in a hurry. So we made it to the airport now. We are all checked in and sitting at our gate waiting for our flight. Osaka has been incredibly good. Uh, one of the things that really stood out to me are the people. Um, many of the people we met in Osaka have been extremely friendly and helpful and their passion for food as well as passion for hanging out and socializing really shines. Another thing that I loved about visiting Osaka as well as this whole region is the food. There are so many restaurants and what I really love is about Japanese food is how they just take simple ingredients and even sometimes very simple recipes but they just cook them to perfection and just glorify the ingredients. And thank you all again for your support and for watching. I really appreciate it and see you on the next video. And like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I am really excited because this entire series is now available for sale. And if you are interested, I will include the link in the description box as well as right here. A couple of the main benefits are that number one, it's completely ad free. So there are no ads on the videos. Uh, number two, it is, you can't, once you, if you buy it, it is completely downloadable. You can download all of the videos. You can burn them to DVD. You can watch them offline. Uh, you can use them. Yeah, you can use them and watch them whenever you want. Another benefit is that I've included two extra bonus videos. One of them is kind of an extra bloopers video. And another is a Q&A video where I've taken some of the top comments and answered them. Uh, it includes a few comments about making these videos and vlogging as well as uh, kind of general travel in Japan questions and answers as well. And then finally, uh, you would really be supporting us, Ying and I. Ying and I make these videos, just us two. And so your support would be extremely appreciated. And so again, I'll leave, the dis I'll, I'll leave the link in the description box as well as here. Uh, if you are interested, you can check that out. And I will continue, we will continue to be posting more and more videos on YouTube. Um, so yeah, thank you again for all of your support and talk soon. I will see you on the next video.